just a moment before then, I want to show you a couple pictures this morning. I, do you have those pictures? I hope you have those pictures as well, that we can show that before we read our verses. Senator Moran was in town just a couple days ago, Friday, who he hosted the primarily primary administrator of Nassau was in Wichita just and Augusta right here uh, just a couple days ago. He was touring a engineering firm, DJ Engineering in Augusta, who is working on the next uh, pre-launch for another moon lunar landing. And that engineering firm is uh, making some parts that are going to be going on that rocket that's heading towards the moon. He's also here at the National Institute of Aviation Research at Wichita State and looking there. Uh, Mr. Moran also took him to the Cosmosphere to show him uh, our space museum right here in our area, and he was very impressed. Bill Nelson, the administrator for NASA, used to be a senator in Florida, but he, in uh, 1986, was able to go up on a Columbia space shuttle as a payload specialist, so he himself has been up in space. But he says he is hunting, and NASA is hunting, I quote him, looking for the first stars ever created. They actually believe, NASA believes, they can go back in time and see when Earth and creation began. We'll talk about that a little bit later here. Again, in that uh, insert in your bulletin today, I gave you that, but it doesn't mean I believe everything in that insert, but I want you to see what the world is believing. The world teaches that this universe is billions of years old. Uh, and specifically, some believe it's around 14 billion years of age. But I believe that you cannot age the earth in billions of years. I believe in a younger earth. And, here, and we will show you why in the next few weeks. But yet, let me just say this. There is, they do assume certain things to come up with that age of the earth. I like what somebody says. It's like calculating different things, but you have to have a starting point, don't you? In our Fahrenheit scale of, of degrees, we have a starting point. It's zero, isn't it? Everything is above zero or everything below zero, but we have a starting point, zero. Sometimes you wonder where certain things came. Well, we have certain things that are boiling points. We have freezing points. We ha and those are not assumptions. Those are, have been scientifically discovered what those points are. But when you're trying to discover how at the age of the earth, it is very difficult for many reasons. For example, sometimes when they use carbon-14 uh, dating, the thing about carbon is it, it degrades very quickly. It would be very difficult for this earth to be billions of years of age or there wouldn't be much carbon to be dated left as fast as it decays. But nonetheless, I like what one, one person said. It's, they said it's like a radar. Now, uh, at a policeman trying to figure out your speed, let's say they clock you going, Charlotte, 100 miles an hour, you know, in your younger days. I'm saying your younger days. I know it's over now. But let's say they clock you going 100 miles an hour. Well, scientists, if they would do like they do aging the earth, they would assume uh, an hour ago you were 100 miles from here. Now, we know in reality we don't know how long you've been going 100 miles an hour. Isn't that right? Uh, she could have just started just in the last mile or two, got up to the speed of 100 miles an hour. But some of these scientists, they assume that everything is at a constant rate. I'm telling you, if we clocked uh, Charlotte at 100 miles an hour, most likely she wasn't 100 miles, an hour, uh, 100 miles from here an hour ago, unless she was in Oklahoma, in, in which she may have been going 100 miles uh, an hour for, for over an hour. But nonetheless, what I'm saying is, when they clock you, they clock you at a specific point in time, don't they? Now, he can assume you're going 100 miles an hour, an hour ago, but that's just an assumption, isn't it? The fact is, she might have been parked an hour ago. The assumption is she might have been at a rest stop just five miles back. It could be just in less than five miles, she got up to 100 miles an hour. But you see what I'm saying? When you assume certain things, it, your assumption may not always be accurate. Do you hear what I'm saying? Even science itself has changed uh, its belief over years. 
before it was, it was the earth was hundreds of thousands of years age, and then it was uh, a million years, and then it was 10 million. Now it's up to about 14 or 15 million. So I'm saying that the science continues to change when their science is based on theory, that some of their theory is based on certain assumptions. But I say, when God said, let there be light, and he said it, and it happened, how fast did that light travel? Did the light travel as fast as it does today? They say light travels at the speed of seven times around the earth in one second. That's pretty fast, isn't it? It is fast. Now, so we assume, they assume, NASA assumes that the greater the galaxy is away from us, they assume that the greater distance equals greater time. That may or may not be true. But nonetheless, let me just share with you just a couple things, and then we'll get into our message. Some of you remember the Hubble telescope that went up into 1990. Anybody remember that term, the Hubble telescope? It used images based on visible light. In other words, light you can see with your own eyes. The thing about the new telescope and this picture that's on the screen, these two pictures on the screen today, are pictures from the new Webb telescope. Where the Hubble used visible light, the Webb uses light in the infrared spectrum. So light that you cannot see with your visible eye. So these are, uh, this is a, a telescope that can see, in a sense, through darkness because it's using infrared spectrum technology. So it's something you cannot see uh, into that darkness with your naked eye. It enables them to go deeper into space because it goes into space where there is no light, so to speak, because it can see through the darkness. So let's look at this first picture, not that one. Let's see the previous picture. This first picture, by the way, the Bible says God put the stars in the sky. The Bible says God numbers the stars. Excuse me. God says he numbers the stars. In other words, he knows how many they are. And he says he gave each star a name. By the way, you can get on the internet and name a star after, the, uh, after anybody you want for like $50. Now, I'm not telling you to do that, but anyway, Nassau calls this one, it calls this image number 0723. Don't you, don't you love the names that Nassau gives? Anyway, what you're seeing, all these little specks are thousands of galaxies. These are not stars you're seeing. These are galaxies you're seeing. This is the deepest we've ever seen in space. This is the very first image that came from this brand new Webb uh, uh, telescope. And by the way, the first images just came out a couple weeks ago in July of this year. What you're seeing is thousands of galaxies in a single frame. That's amazing, isn't it? it these are the faintest objects ever observed from Earth and able to see it through an infrared uh, lens. What you're seeing is a galaxy cluster. All right, then now let's, now let's see the next picture. The next picture is an image called the Carina Nebula. Now, nebula is a stellar nursery where stars form. So it's a star nursery. God continues to create. He continues to create. You know, the flowers bloom, new flowers that have never bloomed before, new seeds uh, dying and blossoming forth, new trees, new fruit that we've never seen before, a sunset that we've never seen before in the formation of the different clouds and colors and atmosphere that sometimes we see newer colors or prettier colors. Sometimes you say, wow, that's an amazing uh, sunrise or amazing sunset. And it's a little bit different than maybe the one we saw previously but NASA is looking here, and they're trying to look back in time. They're trying to look back in time, and I'm telling you what they're trying to do. They say this particular star nursery, they say, is 7,600 light years away. That's a long ways away, isn't it? To them, the, these images show that the universe is not only logical, but it's beautiful, isn't it? It's being revealed again what God is doing for us. Now, let's look at our passage this morning in Psalm chapter 19. Psalm chapter 19 says, The heavens declare the glory of God. Can we all say amen? The heavens declare the glory of God. And the sky, or the firmament, 
shows his handiwork. Day after day, it utters speech. And night and to night, it reveals his knowledge. Let me just tell you, when you see that thing, uh, those stars, when you see those pictures, can you see the knowledge, the wisdom of God who created everything just right and put it in its place where it stays in perfect orbit? Verse 3, there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. In other words, you can look up from any place in the world and you can see the heavens. I don't care what language you speak, what continent you live on, when you look up, don't you see the glory of God? There is no speech nor language where the voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In them he set his tabernacle for the sun. Let me just tell you, where God's creation is, there God is. Amen? Whether it's the sun or the moon or the stars or the earth. Verse 5, which is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber. Now, that's interesting. In the New Testament, in the New Testament, we know who the bridegroom is, don't we? The bridegroom is Jesus Christ. Someday he's going to come from the firmament. He's going to come from the heavens. He's going to come from the nebulae, not as a star, but as the star, the star of all ages, the God of all gods, the Lord of all lords. He's going to come from the heavens and he's going to come to the earth. He's going to, it says, which is like a bridegroom who comes out of his chamber and rejoices like a strong man to run his race. Verse 6, it's rising is from one end of heaven to the other, and there is nothing hidden from its heat. Then let's go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. Hebrews 11, verse 3. It says, By faith we understand that the worlds were formed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. And let me read one last verse, Romans chapter 1, verse 20. That was... Hebrews 11, verse 3. Now Romans 1, verse 20. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things which are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. The Bible says God has revealed himself so much even in the heavens, even in creation, even the stars, even the skies, that those who deny God, deny the Creator, they themselves are without excuse. Let's go back and look at Psalm chapter 19 this morning. Psalm chapter 19. As we look at Psalm chapter 19, the first thing we see, the Bible says, the heavens declare the glory of God. The heavens declare God's glory. Now, when you just saw some of these pictures, and some of you have seen other pictures over time, and you've seen pictures of the stars and the heavens and the planets, you know, I've always thought Saturn was interesting with the rings of Saturn around it. It was always an interesting planet because it looked so much different than some of the other planets. And I know some of you live in another world. It's something about, uh, let's see, men are from Mars and women are from Venus or something. Uh, But nonetheless, it says the heavens in Psalm 19.1 declare God's glory. How could those things just evolve and how can they stay in orbit without attacking each other? It's always interesting. They talk about the space junk that's up there. Have you heard of that? You know, satellites that are no longer working. uh, Parts of, of, uh, you know, space probes that are still up there just floating in the atmosphere. They say uh, over time, sometimes uh, they lose their orbit and they come back to Earth, most of the time they burn up before they uh, enter the uh, Earth's final atmosphere, don't they? Just from the heat uh, that uh, is coming back. That's why the space shuttle had all these, these uh, tiles on it, uh, a, heat sh- a heat shield, so to speak, wasn't it? But most of the time this debris doesn't land on Earth. Sometimes the debris does land on Earth. Somebody says they found something in their, in their field or most of the time it ends in the, uh, lands in the ocean if there's the debris left. But it says the heavens declare the glory of God. Just the beauty of the heavens, the beauty of the sun and the moon and the stars. And now we see nebulae, which I didn't even know there was such a thing as nebulae. But, but we see these things that just declare God's glory. And it says the firmament or the sky proclaims the work of God. It proclaims the God of creation. The heavens declare God's glory, number one. Number two, the sky proclaims God's work, God's creation. And then it talks about the universe speaking. 
I'm thinking, what? Now, it's kind of interesting. You know, NASA has, has on earth, they have these super, uh, let me just call them uh, hearing uh, devices that they aim at the heavens to try to hear sound from, from outer space. And I'm thinking, what are they going to get, wind noise? You know, how, how do they get through the wind noise? But you can actually get online and hear sounds that they say are coming from space. But here's what God says. He says, my creation speaks. Whether it has a voice or not, I'm not saying. I'm saying it speaks just by looking at it. Uh, I can guarantee you, my wife can speak with her eyes without saying a word. I know my kids can, ex- can speak with expressions without saying a word. And sometimes I try to speak to them with expressions without saying a word. Anybody know what I'm talking about here? But it says, you can look at the creation and it speaks to us. Heavens declare God's glory. The sky, the firmament uh, proclaims God's work. The universe speaks his wisdom. L- look at, again, back to uh, uh, Psalm ch- chapter 19, verse 2. It says, and it re- reveals his knowledge or it reveals his wisdom. Oh, can you see that it took a creative force of someone that had some insight of how to make everything just right? Let me say this. There are people who do not believe in God. Therefore, they do not believe in creation. To get around that, they believe in some type of evolutionary theory of one type or another. Let me say, you have to believe one of two things. You either have to believe that someone or something created this universe, or you have to believe that no one or nothing created this universe. That's your choice. Someone or something created this universe... Or no one and nothing created this universe. I like what somebody said. I don't have enough faith to be an atheist. It takes a lot more faith to believe that nothing and no one created something than to believe that someone like God created this work. Heavens declare God's glory. The sky, the firmament proclaims God's work. The universe speaks of God's wisdom. The world itself is God's witness. I think God reveals himself through his holy word. I believe God reveals himself through his son, Jesus Christ. I believe God reveals himself through his Holy Spirit. I also believe God reveals himself through his own creation. And we see the creation of God's world. What is visible, and the Bible says what is invisible. It doesn't matter if you can see it or if you can't. If you ever look in a microscope, I remember the first time I looked under a microscope in school and they had a drop of water in there. And I looked in the microscope and I said, something's moving. I'm not going to drink that water. Something in there is alive. And we know that uh, they, uh, they treat our water today to try to get those living orga- organisms down where you're not drinking living organisms. But, but nonetheless, you look under there and go, I didn't see that before. We've seen these pictures from Nassau. Pictures that we've never seen before. But you know what? Whether, I, whether they're visible or invisible, God created them. What we saw in the past, what we're now seeing now in the future, what they may, if, if God doesn't come back in, 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 in uh, more recent years in the future, there may be better telescopes that we see even further in the, in, into space, right? But whatever I see, I know God created it. The seen and the unseen. By the way, some of you can relate to the seen and the unseen. When that preschooler is very quiet, you don't see a thing, but you're wondering, aren't you? What is being created in the unseen? And you're going to try to see if you can see it. But heavens declare God's glory. The sky proclaimed God's work. The universe speaks of God's wisdom. The world speaks of God's witness. It witnesses to us. And then what is visible, what is visible is his glory. What is visible is his glory. You know what God allows us to see. I'm telling you, there's things that we haven't seen yet. And there are things that we may see in the future that we've never seen before. Uh, If we hadn't had these telescopes, there's things that you can only see with the naked eye. And now we're having this new uh, web telescope that's seen beyond what we can see with our naked eye and seen in the infrared spectrum. And what is formerly hidden, in other words, what we would call the invisible, 
It also shows his glory. Whether you can see it or not, the seen and the unseen. By the way, there's some glorious things about our bodies. The seen and the unseen. Some of you have had a, maybe a CAT scan, a CT scan, a PET scan, an X-ray. And what are they trying to do? See the unseen. Seeing some things internally that you cannot see with your naked eye, right? We're seeing, but, but I'm telling you, God's glory is in the seen and it's in the unseen. How many are glad you got a heart? How many are glad you got kidneys that work? How many are glad you, you have things that eliminate certain things you put through your body and they don't stay in there? You know what I'm saying? The unseen. You know, how many are glad your, your bone structure is intact? You know, the seen and the unseen, it's still God's glory, isn't it? Sometimes we think about what we see and we glorify God in that. But sometimes I think we forget to glorify God in the things we don't see. There's probably so much more that we don't see that we won't see until later on. The Bible says now we see through what? A glass darkly. But when we see him face to face, there's going to be new things revealed, new colors revealed, I believe. There may even be new kinds of plants and trees revealed. I don't know, but I think we're already seeing in these space shots and these space pictures that the beautiful colors and beautiful auroras and, and, and beautiful things in, in the nebulae and in the planets and in the atmosphere that we've never seen before. And then it says here, did you see what it said here about the tabernacle? It says, even the sun... Now, the sun is a star, isn't it? It's not the largest star in the universe, but it's a star. It says, he himself has set the tabernacle up for his, the sun as a tabernacle for himself. What was the tabernacle or the temple? It was where God revealed his presence. His presence came into the tabernacle. His presence came into the temple. It says in the New Testament, do you not know that even your body now is the temple of God, where God wants to reside his presence wants to reside in you, the new tabernacle, the new temple. Here's what I'm going to say here. What was formerly hidden is now his glory, but now it's not just a universe. Listen to me. It's a, they believe now in that there are multiverses, not just a universe, not just one universe, but multiple universes. It's a multiverse. Wow. It, it, is, it is so much more than we saw before. So much more than we understood before. God is so much more a creator than we could even imagine. Just of, of the little part that we can see, he's a glorious creator, isn't he? But I'm telling you, there is so much more that is yet to be seen. And yet I am not uh, bothered by NASA's pictures from outer space. I'm not bothered by them at all. I might be bothered by their interpretation, but I'm not bothered by the pictures. It's God's handiwork on display, and we should glorify in it. Amen? We should glorify in what God is showing us through the advances of uh, technology of man to see now past our own universe, past our own stars, to see the multiverse of God's creation. And then it says, and by the way, the groom is coming out of his chamber. Isn't it interesting? It talks about all this wonderful stuff and all the wonderful creation. And all of a sudden, it seems like it throws this in out of nowhere. And by the way, the groom's coming. And by the way, he's going to come from this glorious, spectacular uh, picture. You know, you've seen uh, pictures on television or maybe you went to a theater. Anybody ever been to a theater? And all of a sudden, it's dark. And in theater, all of a sudden, they turn on one spotlight. And so everybody's eyes are focused in the darkness on this one light that's going to reveal sometimes just one person. You know what I'm saying? Can you picture that? Well, the heaven is, heavens is going to be this one beautiful spotlight of multiple colors, of the multiple universes that God has created. And all the light is going to shine on Jesus and from Jesus. 
He's the light that shines and will shine and He's going to come from the glory of all this creation that's going to be revealed to you and I. I think we're going to see things with our naked eye at that time that not even infrared photography or spectrum uh, telescopes could see. I think God's going to reveal His ultimate glory at all times for the last time for everyone to see there will be without excuse because both the visible and the invisible has now been revealed and the bridegroom is coming He's coming out of his chamber, the chamber of the beautiful creation of God that we only see a little bit of right now. But that day we will no longer see through a a glass of darkness, but we'll see him face to face because we, as he has run his race and he's coming back for his children. Heavens declare His glory. The sky proclaims His work. The universe speaks of His wisdom. The world is God's witness. What's visible is His glory, but even what's invisible, what was formerly hidden, is His glory. And the multiverse is His temple. He lives beyond all His creation because the groom is coming. And let me end with this. The last verse 6 says, It is rising from Psalm 19. Its rising is from one end of heaven and its circuit to the other end and there is nothing hidden from its heat. We know that that's speaking about a specific star, most likely the sun, where it says it comes and it, it makes a complete circle, so to speak. It, 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 no, no part of the earth can hide itself, but really it's greater than the creation. It's the creator. It's greater than the creation. It's the creator. Listen, all creation declares God's glory. All creation should declare God's glory. God declares himself through his creation, through his work, through his wisdom, through his power. Nothing ultimately will be hidden from God. No one can hide from God. Even the galaxies that are furthest away from you or I cannot hide themselves from God and you, the created ones, that were the crown of his creation, we cannot hide from God. Let me say this again. Those inserts in your bulletin today are not necessarily what I believe or we believe as Christians. These are secular articles that I want you to see that's in your bulletin today that even some secular scientists are starting to question, is there a God? There might be. Because of what they're seeing through these images that are coming from a man-made telescope, and they're saying, wow, these things are so perfect, and the timing is so perfect. Everything is just right. How could it just evolve into such a place without destroying itself before it got to that point? So even some scientists are starting to think, they don't want to say it, but there might be something that created this universe other than itself. And I say it is God who has declared that he himself has created this earth. For in the beginning, God created heavens and earth, and he declared its glory. He hung the stars in the sky, he numbered them, and he gave them a name. Let me tell you, our God is an awesome God who created more than you and I can imagine well beyond our universe, well beyond our understanding and comprehension. He is the God of all universes. Somebody says, well, what if there's more? Years ago, I remember saying, what if there's another universe? Are we going to wonder if, if God is there? Let me just tell you, he's there and beyond. He's there and beyond. Star Trek wasn't the first one that came up with the phrase beyond. God is way beyond the universe or universes. Praise be to God for our great and wonderful creator. It declares his glory. Lord, thank you for reminding us that we do not have to be intimidated by any scientist, by any, quote, discovery, Because we know who created time. We know who created the universes. We know who created the stars and the heavens and placed them there. Lord, we know that you are ultimately above all, in all, for all. 
that you created man as a crown of your creation, but yet you created the, the plants, the seas, the land. You created the fish and the land animals and the birds of the air. Lord, you created man, both male and female. You created they, them. But Lord, the heavens do declare your glory. And Lord, I pray that we, your created people, will declare your glory in our lives, in our love, and with our Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.